uh, another theme of this movie that I like is that the fact that well, these characters have to face their their fears. Yeah. So this is a question for you guys about uh, you know what are the fears that you guys had uh, growing up or you know like early life that you have to overcome to rejection to, to yeah and how how do you overcome that what well, female rejection okay yeah i think like i think the lee brothers too have this this thing that like that that has been a big motivator right in your life like female what do you mean by that like i guess like <laughs> dating women or having like acceptance by women has been a big uh reason in or be a big reason to do certain things. Bobby says that that motivated him to get good at comedy because the moment that he had that, women were more, you know, accepting. So are you saying if Bob worked at like Del Taco, he wouldn't get girls? I'm not saying that. He says that. Oh. <laughs> I'm saying that. Carlos, do you, <laughs> Carlos, do you think that? If Bob worked at Home Depot as a manager? No, I think he would have gotten someone cool because he's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, even if he was funny at Home Depot. Exactly, yeah. but not maybe like a model level girl. Oh, like someone off of Raya. Exactly. <laughs> right. Which is what we know he wants. But I why does he want that? <laughs> because he's dead inside, like me. He, yeah, we're all dead. Huh? <laughs> we're all gonna die too. But I guess, like for him, I'm I'm saying in terms of just personal growth, like that gave him confidence. I I'm good at something. I found something where like yeah. I get like you know. You know what? Whatever motivates that. you, yeah. Right. Whatever revs your engine, huh? Right. Um. And I feel like that's something you have in common too, like that <laughs> getting women. <laughs> you know what? There's something to that. Even the my girl, I'm kind of give her a shout out. Shout out to my girl. Yeah. Um. Uh. She's um. I'm with her now, but it's the type of woman that I would never be able to get back in the day. Like, even when I look at her, I like in my mind, I'm like, I can't believe I'm with you. Yeah. Wow. It's a dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So, but what I'm was the, how, how did you get uh, to, I guess, if your, if your biggest fear was rejection from women, how did you overcome that? What was the thing that made you confident or that you, you have to try. If you don't try, you don't, you'll never know. I never tried. Okay. So you have to try. And that's with anything. You have to at least try. Mm -hmm. mm, that's what, that was like. It wasn't as scary once you tried it. No, but then it helped that Scissor Bros helped too, or. Doing other things, you know. Yeah, but this is like Scissor Bros is a recent phenomenon. No, I. This is like. <laughs> what do you mean by yeah, that? Yeah, last couple of years. Right. What I'm saying is like, I mean, without saying oh, any be, age, be, like, like, uh, you didn't overcome your fear of rejection at 45. You did this earlier on, no? Yeah, I mean, I when I got girls in my t late 20s. Right. <laughs> it's not like I never got girls. Right, but I, yeah. okay. No, I, mean, I guess I'm trying to get at like, what is the thing that made you confident in yourself, like growing up? Because like, I guess- Well, wrestling helped. Okay. Um. Yeah. And then when Monchi helped, like doing touring and doing right. shows and tours and stuff. So that helped. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. What about you, Jeremiah? What was your a fear that you had uh, growing up and how you overcame it? Um, well, I think it w I didn't necessarily have too many fears that uh, one that like really was troubled me my early to mid twenties was honestly was commitment to, um, to getting married and having kids. I wanted to like push that as far. It went career first. Yeah. I wanted to push that as far as possible, but like, I I was I think I was looking at it through the wrong lens. Like I was I was thinking that it might prevent certain things, but now that I'm in it and I've I've been married for a while and I, and I have kids, yeah. it's an enhancement. It's not. It doesn't take away. It doesn't prevent anything. It's yeah. an enhancement if you look at it through the right lens. Totally relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like yeah. it feels like oh, I'm gonna my time is gonna be diversified. I cannot focus on just one thing. Right. Like I used I literally used to be terrified of like when I moved to LA that something was going to take me away from chasing the dream. Yeah. And I kind of looked at it like that of of like I was terrified to 
to move in with my wife and then right. and then get engaged and yep. then get married and then have kids literally every step along the way mm. which is probably was exhausting for yeah. her so i'm right grateful she's still with me and because everything's amazing because i actually inversely committed and right. doubled mm. down can i flip it on you guys yeah um are you with a woman yeah yeah he's would you still be <laughs> he's um married as a kid oh that's right you did uh, congratulations thank you um <laughs> Would you, if you're, because I started watching this show called 600 Pound Life. Uh-huh. Would you, would you both be with your women if they were like 685 pounds? <laughs> would she still look the same? Go ahead, guys. Come, no. So is, are her bones so heavy? She looks exactly the same, but it's just, yeah, the she, scale is that, is that 600 pounds? <laughs> yeah, dude, like. Then they, like one look, of our they, arms is no, the size of saying, my body. No, he's saying, <laughs> like he's saying it's the same person. It's right, the same but person. But they're six hundred pounds. But she's six hundred and something pounds. Where you have to? I mean, there's roles. Look, <laughs> I guess this is how I, I. The only way I can answer that question is like if now, let's say that for whatever reason she was to gain six hundred pounds. I would still be with her and love her. I think if I met her and she was 600 pounds, I don't know if the attraction would be there. You know, I be no <laughs> What, dude? <laughs> Come on, dude. This you don't want a fat girl to be <laughs> yeah. your fat cock? Come on, man. It's still Look, do things? Y yeah. To you? Like, yeah. You suck your dick, dude. Right. I think my motivation in life was yeah. a little different than yours. <laughs> I think like <laughs> through a sleep apnea mask. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think women weren't the same for me than for you in terms of like my motivation in life. I think my dreams were, had big. I know you that, wanted to produce stuff and I write scripts. To, I, I yeah, get it, I dude. wanted to do a lot of other things. That, yeah. and, and women, I, I was a little more with Jeremiah in the sense that I didn't want to go from when I was in college because I wanted to do all these things. And then, of course, because you don't want something, that's when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I didn't fight it, but I'm saying like my, my goals were like, oh, I want to direct movies when I move to LA eventually I want to do all of that stuff so I never saw my life through all you know you're not answering suck my, my question dick. are you going to be with her or not I would be with her <sighs> okay your turn yeah you would I mean it's a very similar answer to Andres <laughs> I don't know if I would pursue a 600 pound woman I have obesity. No, 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 no. But what if family. all of a sudden she just starts overeating and she's like, and she's eating like a hundred mozzarella cheese sticks and, and then you're having to enable her and like, you know, like buy like all these, you know, hostess cupcakes. That, that, and then she just starts the, the, progressively morphing into this. The things that hound you, that hound you uh, are different than mine. You know, my nightmares are different than yours. Yeah. Steve. Would it, so that's not a nightmare for every guy? For No, for you. I you think know that, what? I would stick with my woman. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you would like hose her down and do the, you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe we need to come out with a contraption or something, you know? I, oh, right. <laughs> right. Like a harness. A harness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. be a little more like that. Like, but do you, you know, saw. Do you respect that? I like a man sticking with his woman who's over a certain way. I mean, that's commendable, right? Right. Sure, I I don't I haven't thought too much about that. <laughs> Where'd you get those? I don't got no. I want some teeth too. Oh no! Oh god! Is this a... uh... Um, <laughs> you know my favorite um murder in Lost Boys? Which yeah. one? There's one here. Fine. Yeah, you're gonna bite my neck. Head. No, okay. no. Oh right! The top of the head. Yeah, he that's the, um the bonfire. And rips the scalp off with yeah. the teeth. I've never seen that in in another yeah. vampire movie where it's straight to the freaking skull. It, yeah, it's that cool, kicked ass. That's a good one. That was yeah. the first kill. The initiation. The, the, yeah, the whole thing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it true that you slept with your stuffed animals until you were twenty something, Jeremiah? Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. What you so, did, dude? I felt alone in my bed. You slept with stuffed animals. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm not buying you lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last straw. 